Nathan came in and uh, um, I kind of went into my, my pyramid mode. And I was thinking, uh, okay, well, it sounds like he just doesn't do well in school, but let's, let's start at the bottom. And I said, well, how are you sleeping? Uh, not very well, actually. So we talked about that. Uh, are you eating well? Uh, I've gained 10 pounds in the last six months. Um, getting anything for exercise? No, no. And so we kind of start processing, and I say, you know, maybe we could work on some of these things, get a little more sunshine. And he's, he's kind of still got his head down. And um, I said, uh, I really want to know how you're feeling about dropping out of high school. Can we talk about that? And we continued to talk, and I think I was doing my very best. All I was thinking in my mind is, how do I be safe? How do I not judge him? How do I not fix this? How do we sort of figure out how to collaborate? Um, and at some point, Nathan started just crying, and I had no idea why. He's tears. And he said, Dr. Swenson, for the last two weeks, I've driven to school. I've sat in my car in the parking lot for six hours, and then I've driven home because he's too anxious to face the school administrators, too overwhelmed to talk to his parents or to drop out. He was devastated. And I felt so grateful to be the first person he told that to. I thanked him. And we made a lot of progress after that, moving him forward, talking about his relationships, and then putting together a plan for school, which he did go back and he did graduate. But he just needed a safe place. Um, he needed a safe place to talk.